in Stratton from Aswood Turns. A viewer named Johnny asked about a beveled mirror and incorporating it into a wood turning project. Here we are. This is a simple beveled mirror set into a segmented project. There's two rings here inset to each other so that they're essentially very flat. And in place of where I would normally put a plug in the middle, I've added a small jewel. But think of the possibilities with this beveled mirror or other beveled mirrors. The mirrors come in multiple sizes down to about an inch or even three quarters of an inch. So could this be made into a larger plate, if you will, with jewels around or a bowl and the mirror being in the very bottom of the bowl? I made this out of segmented construction. Could it be made out of solid? Could we put a handle on it? All sorts of possibilities. For now, let's make a simple segmented beveled mirror. I chose cherry for this project. Since the mirror is small, I made two rings of eight segments each. These segments were three quarters inch thick, one and a half inches wide, and up to 1.57 inches long. For an eight segment ring, the miter angle is 22 and a half degrees. I glued up all 16 segments into two rings and mounted the rings to wood faceplates with hot milk glue. I'll start with the large ring using a gouge. I don't have a lot of diameter to spare to insert a four inch mirror. All I want to do is knock off the points between the segments and round out the piece. Next I'll face off this ring to make sure the thickness is consistent. I've switched to a square carbide tool. Then I want to cut out the center to allow me to glue in the smaller ring. I'll make sure the sides of the mortise are parallel. I'll use a long scrap stick to sight on to compare it to the lathe bed. This longer stick makes any error much more dramatic. Next I'll mount the smaller ring onto the lathe. Now I want to make a tenon that will fit the, that mortise. I'll start with a coarse measure and work it down little by little until it fits. I'll take it easy as I don't want to overshoot. I'll cut it close, put a chamfer on the end, check for fit, then repeat until I have the fit ready. I'm continuing to use a square carbide cutter, although a square nose scraper would do as well. Then glue the two rings together and let the glue set. With the glue dry, the first thing to do is to mark the diameter of the mirror. Then smooth the face of my blank and start cutting the mortise to fit the mirror. This is about the same as fitting the two pieces of wood together, except that I have to fit the mortise to the mirror instead of the tenon to the mortise. Now that I'm confident the mirror fits, I can shape the mirror side of my wood. With a little wood to spare, I'll just round over the edge. Then sand and finish this side with shellac friction polish. Then using the mirror mortise, I'll reverse the wood on my chuck into a gentle expansion grip. Gentle. I don't want to shatter the edge. Now for the bottom side of the mirror. Anything goes. I'll shoot for an OG first, making a cove with the outer half, then rounding over the edge on the inner half until it looks good. Finally, I'll dress up the inner portion almost like a bowl bottom, but drill out the center.
My mirror came from Hobby Lobby for about $4 for two, but I've seen them at Michael's. The mirrors are around if you look. Then sand and finish the side. I was about to turn a small plug from a contrasting wood when my wife suggested a small piece of paste jewelry. Instead of turning the plug, I'll chamfer the edge just a little to accept a jewel that I will glue in place. And sand and wax the bottom. Voila! I'm ready to glue in the mirror. This is one possibility with a beveled mirror or non-beveled mirror. I'll do a different turning, probably larger, to use the other mirror in the package. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my website and YouTube channel. Always wearing a face shield keeps the turning fun. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns.